إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, as many of us know and are very happy with the greatest and most desired blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is the enrichment that we find in our lives with our children. For many of us, at a young age, we desired and dreamed of having a family, starting a family of our own, having our own children, sons and daughters. We had dreams of being parents and raising our children, leaving behind a legacy, carrying on our tradition and our family name. This is a desire that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in us. It is a natural desire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in this manner to look for children, to ask Him to bless us with offspring. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Nahl, وَاللَّهُ جَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا وَجَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَزْوَاجِكُمْ بَنِينَ وَحَفَدَةً وَرَزَقَكُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and Allah has made for you wives of your own kind, and has made for you from your wives sons and grandsons, offspring, and has bestowed upon you good provision. Wanting children, having a desire for children. It is something that has been requested by many, many great individuals with open arms extended to Allah Azza wa From the best of creation, including the prophets and messengers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Imran, He says, هُنَالِكَ دَعَ زَكَرِيَّ رَبَّهُ قَالَ رَبِّ هَبْ لِي مِن لَدُنْكَ ذُرِّيَّةً طَيِّبَةً إِنَّكَ سَمِيعُ الدُّعَاءً in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is relating the story of one of his great prophets, Zakariya alayhi salam. And he says, at that time, Zakariya invoked or made supplication, dua. He prayed and asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Oh my Lord, grant me from you a good offspring. Grant for me children. The enrichment that children bring to one's life. It is almost uncomparable to any other worldly thing that you can find. And for this reason you will find that even from amongst the greatest and most pious of Allah's servants, Ibad al-Rahman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just talks about these servants that are unique and special in their qualities. And if you want a good read, by the way, if you want something to really blow your mind, I would suggest that you read Surah Al-Furqan, verses 63 to 77. If you want something to really blow your mind about being a servant of Ar-Rahman, to really look at yourself, to compare yourself to these righteous people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to in these verses, 63 to 77, Al-Furqan. Anyway, in one of these verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْلَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse, this is verse number 74. He says, And those who say, Our Lord, bestow on us from our wives and our offspring, who will be the comfort of our eyes. From your wives and your offspring, from your spouses and your children, you will find comfort 
You will find ease. You will find happiness and you will find joy in the desire of children, in the love of children. This was the advice of the Prophet Sallallahu to have children, to want to have many children, to have a big family, a large family. There was actually a story that was related by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on Ma'qil ibn Yisar radiyallahu anhu. He says, Qala, جَاءَ رَجُلٌ إِلَى النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فَقَالْ إِنِّي أَصَدْتُ امْرَأَةَ ذَاتَ حَسَبٍ وَجَمَالٍ So this man, he says, I've come across the woman and she has a good, uh, like a good family name and she has, uh, she has a lot of beauty. She's a very beautiful woman. So she has two great qualities. That she comes from a good family, well-respected tribe, and she's also very beautiful. Then he says, But she is unable to bear children. So he asked the Prophet ﷺ, Should I marry this woman? The Prophet ﷺ, He said, No. So the man went back looking to get married. He wants to start a family, like many people do. And he brought, or he didn't bring, but he came with the news of another woman, Thania. He says, uh, so he came with another one. Or news of another one. I have found another woman. The Prophet ﷺ prohibited him from marrying her. And then he brought a third one. The Prophet ﷺ, after this trial and error process, this man was looking for good advice on who to marry. Sometimes we just go get married. We rush right into it. We don't look for advice from our family members or those that we trust that have knowledge and experience in marriage, in relationships. We just jump right into it. But this man was looking for the right way, successful way. So he sought the advice of the Prophet ﷺ. So when he came with the third one, the Prophet ﷺ, he says, Marry an affectionate, childbearing woman. For I will be the most in number amongst all of the other nations. Showing us the importance of having children, having a large family, finding delight and joy in family, in this life and in the next. However, children, having children, it's not a competition. Not in this life, however. For the Prophet Sallallahu this is something unique, something that he will boast about, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, that his ummah, his followers were the largest in number. He had the most believers, those that followed after him were the most in amount. But for us, having children is not a game. Bringing children into the world is not a game. It is not something that can be taken lightly. It is a big responsibility to have children. This is a gift that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is a responsibility that when you have your first child, you take on from that moment until the moment that you leave this world. It is a burden that we have to carry, a weight that we have to bear on our shoulders. There is no turning it off. There is no exchanging it and there is no returning it. When you have a child, you cannot take it back. You cannot get your refund. You cannot get the receipt and show, listen, I got the wrong one. This is not the one I like. It begins from the very moment whether you like it or you don't. And we have to live up to that responsibility. Brothers and sisters, our children, they have rights over us. The Prophet Sallallahu said, has been reported in Sahih Muslim, وَإِنَّا لِوَلَدِكَ عَلَيْكَ حق, That your child has a right over you. So, just to share something on a personal note, it's always mind-boggling to me that when parents, they come to the Imam or whoever, and they begin to ask, what are the rights of the parents? And they say, I need you to tell my children what the rights of the parents are over them. I want you to explain to them how they should treat me as a parent. And normally this happens around the time of 13 to 18, 19 years of age. The parents have lost control and have lost their grip and have seen that something has gone very wrong. Their children are now talking to them in a bad manner, doing things that are less than, less than what they should be doing. And so they come to someone, the imam or whoever, and they say, please tell my children what the rights of the parents are over the child. 
how they should respect and honor me as their parent. And they never ever ask, or it's rare, that you'll find a parent ask, what are the rights of my child over me? What do my children deserve and are owed from me as their parent? Parents, we love, as a parent myself, we love to hear lectures and presentations and we love to read about our rights as parents and how we should be respected and honored and looked up to and treated in a certain manner and kindness and mercy and love. We love to hear that and we talk, constantly tell our children, you have to respect parents, you have to listen to me, you have to obey me, you have to, to the end of it. But often we neglect what it is that we owe our children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed certain rights over us as well in regards to our children, how they are to be treated, how they are to be taught and cared for. So my theory is that if the parents from the very beginning, before they even had children, they asked themselves or whoever else they needed to, what are the rights that a child has over me as a parent? Then they would not find themselves in the situation that they are. Having to ask someone now to tell their child to respect them. They've come to an end. So they go, please tell my child to respect me. But if you had learned what you have to do to help develop that child from the beginning, then it's possible that you would not be in such a situation. The interesting thing about children, brothers and sisters, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created them upon a natural disposition, a natural manner. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created them in a state of purity and innocence. It's nothing more innocent and pure than a young newborn child. They don't know sin. They don't know wrong. They don't know the evils and the temptations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made them in this way as they are a gift from Him Azza wa Jal. They are a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they have been pre-programmed, if you will, and are ready for operation. They are ready to go. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give us this gift and then ask us to instill in them the belief in Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, but He did that for us. The only thing that we have to do is make sure that we don't mess it up. It's like when someone gives you a new gift, any type of gift. A new pair of shoes or a new car or a new home. When you have a new job or a new relationship. It's there, it's brand new, it's flawless, it's beautiful. And the only responsibility that you have is to take care of it and make sure that you do not wreck it and destroy it. This is the situation with our children. It's been reported in Sahih al-Bukhari. فَإِنَّ أَبُوْ هَرَيْرَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ كَانَ يُحَدِّثُ قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ما من مولود إلا يولد على الفطرة أبو هريرة he reported and he used to say that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that there is not a child born except that it is born upon this natural disposition the natural inclination that it has been that has been placed inside of it فأبواه يهودانه أو ينصرانه أو يمجسانه and it is his parents who change him it is his parents who will change him to make him either a Christian or a Jew or a fire worshiper or any other thing after that. It is the parents' job to mold the child. Whether they're going to keep that mold that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made them in, a pure mold, a pure fashion, a pure disposition, or they're going to change it to something else. They're going to change that child's natural disposition to loving Allah, worshiping Allah, believing in Allah, to something totally different than that. Abu Huraira, he began after that and recited from the Quran, Fitratullahi allati fatra nas alayha, in Surah ar rum verse number 30. He recited the verse when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the natural disposition of Allah in which He created mankind upon. This natural way, brothers and sisters, the children, they are like this. And because of the significant role that we play as parents, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not left us alone to our own devices to raise our children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not left us alone to figure it out by ourselves. What do we do? How do we do it? But rather, He has sent us clear guidance. And He has taught us our obligations towards our children as parents. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us very clearly what we owe our children when we take on the responsibility of bringing them into this world. <clears throat> and due to the gravity of this situation and the profound role that the parents play, the great scholars of Islam have explained some of these rights, some of these obligations, and they say that the first and perhaps most profound right that the child has over the parents begins before they're even born. The most profound obligation of a parent to their child happens even before they get married. And that is husn al a good choice when choosing a mother or father for your children. When you choose your spouse, when you choose your mate, when you get ready to get married, part of your selection process should be, will this person be a good parent to my children? Will they be a good father? Or will she be a good mother? And the scholars, they go on and talk about this issue quite lengthily. And they say, if the person sees in this potential spouse that they will not be good parents, then it will be a sin that will haunt them their entire life. That they deliberately chose someone that would be a poor parent because of some other outweighing factors like beauty or lineage or wealth that was more important to you at the time than the children that you were going to have. And because of that decision, it will be a sin that you will carry throughout your life, a hardship that you will struggle with throughout your life, having to deal with a bad quality parent. Likewise, if a person sees in a potential spouse that they have good qualities of being a parent, though they may be lacking in other areas that you would prefer, we all love the most beautiful, the one that has the most money, the one that comes from a good family, and so on and so forth. The famous and this, things, that, things like this. But if you take a sacrifice for, for the betterment of your family, for the betterment of your community, then it will be a reward that a person will see in this life and in the next. Choosing a good spouse, the Prophet Sallallahu is reported in Sahih al-Bukhari, on Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu, on an Nabi Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, aqal, tunkihu al-mar'ah li arba'in. That woman is married for four reasons. Limaliha, wali hasabiha, wajamaliha, wali diniha. The Prophet ﷺ said the woman's married for four things. She's married for her wealth, meaning that she's wealthy, not that she's poor. She's married for her beauty. She's married for her lineage. And she's married for her faith, for her religion, for her practice of Islam. The Prophet ﷺ, he says, فَضْفَرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينِ he says, then you should aim for the one that has religion. You should shoot for the one that has religion, the one that has faith, the one that has piety, the one that has taqwa in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that is God-fearing and adheres to the tenets of her belief. The Prophet ﷺ said, you will find great delight in that. All of the other things, wealth and beauty and lineage, all of those other things, they have a short shelf life. There's a very short shelf life. Money, it comes and goes. It's here today, it's gone tomorrow. You have it one moment, the next moment you're poor. Beauty, and we all know how that is. In the youth, the beauty is there. When you get older, it fades away and it's fleeting. Lineage, something that is only good on paper. But your faith, a person's faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their practice of Islam, will provide you the tools that you need to keep your family united and your children in a good situation. There are other rights. Though I said this is one of the most profound that even begins before the child is born. There are other things. They are considered to be ceremonial rituals, ceremonial rites that the child is due. From those is feeding the child upon their birth with softened dates or sweets from your own mouth. Giving the child an honorable name. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reported an authentic hadith having said Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Inna habba asma'ikum ilallahi abdullah wa abdurrahman To name your child, to give him a title that is most beloved to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala calling him Abdullah or Abdurrahman To begin them in this world with dignity and honor with their name And there is a lot to be said about a good name 
or naming them the names of the prophets as the prophet وسلم, reported on Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu anhu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam fasammaytuhu bismi abi ibrahim he said tonight i was given a son and so i named him after my father ibrahim this is part of the rights that the child has another of those is shaving the child's head and giving its weight in silver as charity having an aqiqa slaughtering animals and feeding the community for your child in gratitude showing thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as well as circumcision these are part of the rights that the child has and the child has not done anything for you the child has not given you anything the child has not even spoken a word to you yet and you are already making sacrifices for that child you are already dedicating your life from the very moment that it is born and that will continue on until either of you passes away and after that brothers and sisters perhaps the most important and the most impacting right that the child has over us is their right to a proper education and development اقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه انه هو الغفور الرحيم <coughs> بسم الله والحمد لله حمد كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضاه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد Brothers and sisters the real job of a parent the real job of the parent is to see to the development of their child it is to keep them on the right track in the early years of their life and it is to provide continuous support, guidance, and advice when they become adults. The role of the parent, though it does change in the various stages of the child's life, it never stops. It never ends. You never stop being a parent to your child, even if your child is grown and has children of his own. Our children, brothers and sisters, are perhaps one of the most, or perhaps the greatest investment that we have in this life. Our children could possibly be one of the greatest investments that we have in this life. And the reason for that is the statement of the Prophet ﷺ, mata ibn Adam in amaluhu illa min thalath. The Prophet ﷺ, he says that when the son of Adam, when the human being dies, all of his deeds, they are cut off, except for three things. Sadaqa jariya, ilmun yantafi'u bihi, wa waladun salihun yad'u lahu. The Prophet ﷺ said these three things, it is sadaqa jariya, continuous charity. It is some form of knowledge that people benefit from after you pass away. Or it is a righteous child who makes dua for you, who supplicates for you. So the question is, how do we raise children that will be those children that will remember us after we have gone? And they will ask Allah for us, that they will make dua for us on our behalf. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us al-jannah, to increase our rank in paradise. How do we raise children that will be that investment that will give us that return? The challenge that many of us face, it is not the desire for that. It is not the love that we have for our children. And it's not really the time or the means that we have either. All of us that have children, we love our children dearly for the most part. At most times, we love our children. And sometimes we tolerate them. We cannot divorce children. Also, we have busy lives, but we all find time now and again to be with our children. Means, the money to spend on the children. It is one thing that a parent, if they do not have for themselves, they will give to their children. If they do not have money to spend on themselves, then they will spend it on their children. They will find a way. This isn't the real problem that we're facing. The real problem or the real challenge, I should say, is the manner of investment. How do we invest in our kids? What do we teach our kids? What do we give them? What do we expose them to? What are our expectations of them? How do we set the bar 
How high should it be? In what arenas and facets of life should we have expectations of our children? What are our goals for our children? And how can we avoid that day when we need to take our child that is 13 or 14 or 15 by the ear to the imam and say, can you please tell my child the rights of the parents? How can we avoid that? Brothers and sisters, this is where we will pick up next week, inshallah ta'ala. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid wa akhiru da'wana na alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa aqimis salah.